All right, round one is a go. And this hand is certainly not exciting, but uh, we do have a pretty fast Hornet Queen in addition to a removal spell. And if this were a post-board game, I would probably not be super excited about this hand because I would certainly expect that this Hornet Queen was not going to live. But since it's game one, I don't expect things, you know, like Anger of the Gods and all that craziness. So this should be a fine draw, especially if our opponent is actually red-green. Or he's Teamer. Uh, so they can have things like Teamer Charm, uh, both to counter it and to get past it. So uh, Hornet Queen is not a lock against them, but is definitely very, very good. And uh, I would probably take this hand in the dark uh, against like any Teamer opponent. And if it was like, you know, hey, you have the option of having this hand with a pretty fast Hornet Queen, I'd probably be like, yeah, I'm going to take that. Just because it's one of the best ways to actually interact with them. And make sure you don't die to things like Storm Breath Dragon. So, uh, he probably doesn't have a ton of targets for this Reclamation Sage. So, I feel pretty fortunate that, like, A, he has Corsair in his deck, which I think is correct. Uh, I think, I think Corsair is, uh, one of the things that this deck needs to be doing. But, uh, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate, I think, to have an actual removal spell for this. So, uh, we have not drawn a land, but we've drawn a decent amount of interaction, and Farika is pretty good against his ground guys. Uh, if we get to the, the mid-game here, and, you know, maybe if we draw a Seder Wayfinder or something, it'll be turned on. Could also just, like, suicide this Reclamation Sage or chump block with it, so, uh, even if Farika just, like, makes one thing, it often deters them from attacking, so, it's still pretty good. And, uh, I'm almost certainly just gonna Thoughtseize here and let him keep his Courser, just, like, Thoughtseize and play another Karyatid. But I guess, guess we'll see what's going on with the grip. Dig through time, Ash Cloud Phoenix, and a bunch of lands. With a land on top. So, uh, I could certainly take this dig. But he's, he's like, I guess he's pretty close to casting it. You know, like, if I thought he's his Phoenix and he cracks a fetch, then he can dig. So, uh, that's not the best. But, like, Phoenix is also kind of tough to deal with. So, I'm not sure. Gotta, gotta think about this one for a second. Alright, so... I'm just gonna take the dig, and I think if I have to, I, I'm i more than willing to use two removal spells on this Phoenix, and I'll just let him keep the Courser, at least for now. And we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how things go. So, uh, Teamer Charm on top. That's gonna be good against our Hornet Queen, so maybe we'll try and bait that out with a few other things, but see how this game plays out. Maybe maybe he actually just wants to scry the team or charm away, because otherwise I would expect him to play a fetch land. And he, and he did keep it on top, I think. I guess he could have bottomed it and had another one, but uh, no, he did keep it on top, so uh, I probably would have just played the the foothills that turn. If I were him, but understandable either way. All right, so now we have a Delta. Pretty close to playing this Hornet Queen. And I think I'm just going to double kill this Phoenix. Uh, if... If he didn't have Teamer Charm on top, like if I knew our Hornet Queen was safe, then things might be a little bit different. But as is, I feel like that Phoenix is going to be tough to deal with. And by killing that, I should be able to give myself a bunch of time. Uh, ideally, I would want to keep the fetch land in play for any future coursers, but... Uh, I think I'm fine just delving all this and keeping the carry tid back to block the courser. And he's just... Oh, he played the foothills off the top instead of the shivan reef? That's kind of weird. I would just play the reef and hope the next card's a spell. It's like... Basically the same thing as cracking foothills, so... Uh, so we could try and do something weird here where we like pull a bunch of mana and get, like go to combat. I think I'm just going to do that. It 
just pretend like like we misclicked or whatever. And now it's like, hey man, if uh, if you want teamer charm this, go nuts. <laughs> I would expect him to let this resolve, especially if he realizes that, like, uh, that I'm doing this on purpose, but, yeah. I mean, it is almost turned on, so it's not the worst thing to actually, like, get to resolve, but I'd much rather resolve my Hornet Queen next turn. So, Starboard Denial off the top. And then just two more lands in a row for my opponent. All right, there's a Corsair. So now our Freak is online, and the world is great. Maybe we can just rattle off three lands in a row to pay for the Teamer Charm Mana Leak. Step one. And step two is on top as well. Maybe you should have... Maybe you should have Teamer Charm this Farika that's now giving you the beatdowns. What do you think? Probably not. Arbor Colossus? Jeez. Thing blocked my Farika. With Viverbos on top, that's. That's a reasonable keep. And, well, I don't know. I guess it's it's kind of weird, right? Because, like, I, I could run the Hornet Queen out this turn, get it Teamer Charmed, and then try and play Whip next turn. But if he goes Arbor Colossus and has Stubborn Denial, then it doesn't really matter. So, I guess since he can just Denial this, I can just put this on the bottom. But it's still kind of wonky. Like, why would I put my whip on the bottom? I think, I think if I resolve Hornet Queen, I can just win. So I just want another shot at a land. And we have the land. Okay. So I would have hit it anyway, like having drawn the whip, and then this would be on top. But uh, I still think that's okay. Just keep giving them the freak of beatdowns here. Oh, wow. Okay. Alright, so he he had had enough of the Freak of Beatdowns, and he team charmed to kill my thing. So now I get to resolve this Hornet Queen. So, a little awkward that I shuffled that whip away, but uh, I still don't mind how things turned out. And now I assume that he is just going to die to this Hornet Queen. I would be very shocked if he had something main deck that could actually deal with it. But uh, he does have Dig and Courser, so uh, it would not surprise me to have Anger. Although he does also have Ash Cloud Phoenix, and that's kind of a non-bow. So who knows, really. Seder Wayfinder on top, sure. It's a good one with my Farika. And I think we just send all the bees. We're not too concerned about a crackback because we have Farika still. And we do see an anger of the gods. Okay. So, pretty awkward. Uh, I don't really like him lightning striking the Hornet Queen, but it does turn off my Farika. But then if he's just going to attack, I can make a thing. Can make a snake. Uh, now he's going to anger me, so basically a lot of my stuff is going to die. Uh, we have a Doomweight Giant on top. That's not bad. So I can play Seder Wayfinder this turn, turn on the Farika for a little bit, and get in 
either 9 or 6 points of damage, depending on if he wants to chump with his Courser. Uh, but then he's just going to anger, like, all my insects, my two characters, my Wayfinder. And I kind of just want to draw that Doomwake Giant next turn. So, I think I'm just going to attack with the insects. His dig through time is pretty powerful. It's not bad. Yep, so anger all my stuff away. Pretty unfortunate. Uh, and now I can make <clears throat> make a hornet, or make a snake rather, uh, exiling my hornet queen, but I kind of want that there in case I find a whip of Erebos. I don't think the the one per turn is worth it. I think I'd rather just have a Hornet Queen later. So, uh, I kind of want that Sadisi too. Don't even really want to want to mill over that with Wayfinder. So I'm yeah, I'm just gonna keep that. I'm going to attack with the Courser though. And now I think I make a Snake because I have the Doomwake Giant, and I I would like to get rid of his Courser. And I think that's worth it just because I have Sidisi on top. So uh, Farika is going to be online, plus I'm going to have a bunch of fuel for it. And I would rather he doesn't milk, uh, like, fetch land courser, dig through time to, like, actually find a bunch of action. So I like my spot right here, and I, I don't feel like I have to, you know, try and wait it out, really. And, like, uh, like this deck doesn't need Whip of Erebos to win, so... Uh, you, you just utilize your resources in such a way that puts you in a winning position, not necessarily in the way that gives you the best value. So obviously saving the queen for the whip uh, would give me a bunch of value down the line, but I can also just try and win the game right now. So I'm, I'm going to do that. Sounds like a better plan. So his deck's pretty interesting. Looks kind of like a teamer control-ish type of thing. And I think I like that take on teamer a little bit more right now. So we have a CDC on top. More than fine milling that away. Get a little zombie. Take another shot with Seder Wayfinder, pick up a land, put a couple more creatures in the graveyard for Farika. Uh, don't hit a land with Courser, but make another zombie. And now we have Soul of Innistrad on top, which is <clears throat> should probably seal the game up. And at this point, I can just attack with everyone, I think. Can always have a, a mid-combat Doomwake trigger. What is this? What is he doing? What sort of shenanigans are happening? That that is a shenanigan. <clears throat> six six is very large. Alright, so mid-combat here. Make a snake, Doomwake trigger. Uh, I don't lose anything, but I also don't get to kill any of his creatures, but that's fine. Still get to deal him a boatload of damage, have a bunch of creatures back to block, I'm at 21 life. So even something like Ang Anger of the Gods, which might set me back, is not actually going to kill me. Ashcloud Phoenix... 
That is not going to do it, buddy. And his last card is still the Stubborn Denial. All right, so three blockers. These are my three biggest. P4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, okay. Very dead. Also, if I wanted to, I could have Farika Doom Wake Dim a bunch, but it doesn't really matter. I know his last card is the Stubborn Denial, so. Good showing there. Took a little bit for the engine to get online, but when it did, it was great. Uh, and I, I would, I would assume that he is gonna board into like this kind of more controlling deck with a lot of counter spells like disdainful stroke in addition to the stubborn denials so i'm gonna want these thought seizes it might seem like disdainful stroke is good but he can always morph phoenix surak is uncounterable and then dig through time is the one that i would really kind of want to fight over but i don't think i have that luxury uh i i want to keep in one sage to kill his coursers i think I think drawing one is going to be fine. I don't want to draw too many more than that. Uh, Doomwake does not seem particularly good, even though it has like the late game stuff with Farika going on. But if I'm getting angered a bunch, I'm not sure how much uh, that's actually going to be able to matter. So I kind of want to just cut like the Queens and the Doomwakes and board in the Planeswalkers. I think those are going to be more effective threats. And since I'm boarding down on creatures, I can probably cut the Soul as well. So we'll see how this looks. Kind of want this read the bones. Uh, and now at this point, Sadisi is not not a lock to hit or anything. Um, plus, I, I'm losing a lot of my big stuff for whips, so the whips don't seem great. <clears throat> I would not be surprised if something like Back to Nature came in also. Which is another reason to have a sideboard plan where you can shave on things like Whip and, and Doomwake Giant and actually just get away with it. Uh, I would kind of like the dead drops here, except it doesn't seem like he's going to have more than one creature in play uh, for most of it. Plus, there are things like Stubborn Denial, which make me really hesitant to actually invest like my entire turn casting something. So I know these carry tids are going to die to anger, but I'm also not giving him a lot of reason to anger, and I kind of need the blue swords. I think I should probably shave one. I don't know. I'm not super happy with how the deck looks now with these whips. Maybe I just don't want whip at all, but he does have like a bunch of burn spells too. Maybe some of that stuff is coming out though. Maybe Whip is the same thing with Sage, where it's like, it's good to draw one. Eh, alright. I'm just going to bring in a stroke for Farika also. I don't think Farika is going to get turned on too much, and I'm not... Like, if he's angering me, I'm not going to have a ton of stuff in my graveyard, so... That sideboarding is, is really just, like... It's not pretty at all. It's very slapdash, and uh, might not be correct, but uh, a lot of it might depend on the cards I see this game and like what his configuration looks like. All right. So we have a hand. It looks great. And we also have a puppy. Say hi puppy. Hmm. I don't think I'm really in a rush to thought seize him. Don't actually want to take a bunch of damage. Uh, now I might thought seize this turn because I want to. Ideally, I would want to get Ashiok online, and then if he does something like play Savage Knuckle Blade, then I can go Wayfinder cut it. So yeah, I'm just gonna go with the thought seize here. Has stro Aether Spouts, Jesus. That that is a magic card. 
little, little rough against Thoughtseize, though. What are the odds I forget that it's there, though, and just walk into it? That'll be a pretty funny moment in this video. So, Anger, Anger, Stroke, Spouts, Hills, and I guess I'm taking this Courser because it's the only thing that really puts him ahead. He's He doesn't have anything to Stroke in my deck, and I mostly sided a bunch of those cards out, too, so it's pretty nice. And then I think Ashia can just run wild here. Depending on what he draws. Come on, no stubborn denial. No stubborn denial. Yes. So one of the great things about this version is that you have the Planeswalkers that are so good in the mirror matches, and it also allows you to pivot a little bit when uh, you expect people to bring in a bunch of weirdo hate cards. So things like Back to Nature and uh, even just having like Anger, Disdainful Stroke, like Ashiok just gets under all of that, and it's so powerful. Like it doesn't actually look like it's doing much, but it's like this thing you get to play on turn three, and they have to answer it at some point. So really have been liking Ashiok a lot. So I've not hit any creatures yet, but I'm not too upset about that. And I'm just going to lead with Courser here. If I hit a land, great. If I don't hit a land, I can just play Swamp and Thoughtseize if I want, but... Ooh, another Opulent Palace. Thank you. Of course, they're so nice to me, always. Alright, so he's got his own Courser. Uh, awkwardly enough, fetched his Foothills for a Mountain... Uh, which was understandable because he had a bunch of angers in his hand and then had to play his land to play his Courser and can't play the land off the top. So uh, Now things are kind of interesting. Where I could Ashiok, but I don't really care if he draws a Temple of Abandon. So uh, this might be one of those spots where I just let the Ashiok, you know, sit there for a turn. Just kind of chill out. And since he has a Courser, I just control his draw steps between the knowledge from his Courser and my Ashiok. So, uh, since I have Sidisi on top, I mean, I guess taking the stroke makes more sense, but he, he's also just going to get to anger me, so maybe I just need to clear out those angers. Maybe, like, maybe he won't stroke Sidisi if, you know, he thinks he can anger it. So, uh, yeah, I think probably taking an anger is better. And then we just kind of sit here, I think. And you might say that, well, I have a cut and a stroke, so it doesn't matter if he draws a spell, because I have most of his stuff on lockdown, right? So I should just be ticking up Ashiok, but uh, I don't think that's the right way to look at things. Uh, so I have a cut and a stroke, and he has a dead draw step. And... Now I feel like I'm in a better position than if I gave him a chance to draw a spell and actually had to use one of my things. So uh, He put his Knuckle Blade on the bottom so that I could not get it with Ashiok. Which is fine. I get it. Uh... So we're going to run Sidisi out there, see what happens. He's just going to stroke it. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. And I think, again, we're in the same spot where it's just like, okay, draw land. Don't really care, you know.
I will get that dig through time though. That is something I'm interested in him not having. Ashiok versus Corsair is just so filthy. As mentioned in one of my previous videos, when you have a Corsair and they're Ashioking you, Ashiok always takes a good card and leaves you with crap. That's that's just the way it goes. Ooh, now we get an Arbor Colossus. Big monster. Yep, and he draws a land. So, good job, Ashiok. Uh, I think I want to draw this Corsair. Yeah. Yeah, I do. We've got another dig on top. So wouldn't mind minusing Ashiok at this point to get the 6-6, six, six, but I'd rather he just not have a dig. Now we have a bunch of creatures. And I'm fine milling over this other Ashiok. Because I don't, I don't feel like the one I have currently is going anywhere. So Extra shot to hit a land with Corsair, which we do. And it's a Delta, so it's a good one. And... Oh, there's the back to nature. Not surprising whatsoever. Now we're in a spot where maybe this knuckle blade gives us trouble. I don't think so, though. Yeah, I mean, if he attacks, I just double block. He pumps it, I cut it. It's whatever. I could also just chump this turn, but <clears throat> I'd rather... Uh, this turn, I actually have the option of... Uh, blowing him out with a double block, so. Hopefully he attacks. Because it will not end well for him. Yep, here it comes. So if I end up just trading a Courser for this, that's fine. Uh, lessens the impact of the back to nature he has. draw this Urborg. And it's just on top again, so fine. Uh, I guess I could be running into a Stubborn Denial here, but no, he has, he has an Anger and a Spouts, so yeah. I'm safe, I'm safe. Keep doing monstrous this colossus this is great i don't mind sending with everything there he gets to block the wayfinder but uh that is going to get swept up in an anger at some point anyway and 
I could just play out a Phoenix. Guess we should probably just try to kill him. So what did he draw last turn? I missed it. I don't remember. I know he has an Aether Spout that I'm probably going to have to stroke. And I believe I'm supposed to just cut his Courser. Maybe not though. I'm trying to think. Think of a way if I can kill him this turn. I yeah, or kill him on the next turn. He didn't use the aether spouts. Curious. Put out this Urborg, I suppose. So the the miser stroke, oddly enough, allowing me to play around Aether Spouts, which is pretty funny. Anger, sure. Was it another anger? Because that'd be kind of bad. Now I'm supposed to cut this thing. Keep my Ashiok around. Before we go, let's see if you got any other sweet stuff in here. Stubborn Denial. Nope, not really. Normal big teamer stuff. That's cool though. I like the deck. I think uh, Ashiok single-handedly won this. Made sure my opponent never drew a good card. Miser Stroke obviously did some work too, but that is going to be it. Successfully sidestepped all of his sideboard cards. So, uh... I don't think this deck is 100% at doing that right now. Uh, you just have to be aware of it with the deck list that you have. But I think the deck can be built in such a way to better be able to execute that plan in the future. So uh, that's something I'm probably going to be working on this week. But so far, so good.